Hello and welcome to Chabot News for December 14th, 2023. My name is Evan Neto and today we'll be covering a candlelight vigil for the shooting victims at the University of Nevada, Las Vegas, a San Jose woman who claims a popular spicy dish, left her with chemical burns to her mouth and nose, and 275 National Guard members returning home after four months in the Middle East. In entertainment, Taryn covers the death of Norman Lear at the age of 101. In sports news, Alan will tell us about the sale of a rare Babe Ruth rookie card and the surprising amount it went for. All that and more coming up in today's edition of Chabot News. A torch burned outside St. Viator Catholic Community Church Thursday night, December 7th, as dozens of the attendees inside knelt in front of an altar and placed a candle while the church choir sang in the background. More than 100 people sat quietly inside the church for a community prayer honoring those affected by the shooting at the University of Nevada, Las Vegas. Please take me to the King. Tonight brought unity and togetherness in a safe place, but this morning UNLV Student Union was a frightening place for Chris Solomon and several dozen UNLV students and volunteers with his nonprofit Rise Free. They were there for an event on the second floor. You know, we're, we're organizing students, we're teaching them about things, and it was fun, and that all turned into, you know, fear and cries from students inside the um, meeting room. For a while, after a shooter opened fire at Beam Hall, it was complete chaos on the campus, Solomon says. All of us had to raise our hands up. They told us to be prepared. Though everyone at his event was able to make it out safe, the sights, sounds, and emotions of the day won't be forgotten, he says. I don't know who it was, but there was someone's body present as we were leaving behind Student Union. Solomon says he felt it was important to be at the vigil, which was put on in part by Tori Russell, founder of Broadway in the Hood, a local theater production organization. Russell says togetherness was needed Wednesday night and will be needed in the days and nights ahead. And we all came together to be able to just say, come together and love on each other. According to police, the 67-year-old gunman who killed three faculty members and wounded a fourth in a roughly 10-minute rampage at UNLV had a list of targets at the school and more than 150 rounds of ammunition. It's the season of giving, but sometimes it's a struggle to find the perfect present for the seniors in your life. So, how about giving a gift that can help, more, that can help keep them safe? In today's Health Minute, Mandy Gaither has a gift list that can help brighten a senior's life even after the holidays. This holiday season, give the gift that keeps on giving to the seniors in your life. And so this is a great time of year to think about some of those opportunities that can help keep people living in their homes safely give them a sense of independence. Orthopedic surgeon Carmen Quatman with Ohio State University's Wexner Medical Center says for the traveling senior, think about accessories like a vehicle support handle to help them get in and out of a car safely or a lumbar support pillow to help with pain and stiffness. There's little pillows you can buy for camping that you can just put a couple of little puffs in stick behind your back, put it under your legs for long car travel. Quadman says to help them stay hydrated with a personalized water bottle or for those who have hand tremors, weighted utensils and writing instruments can be a perfect present. But it can really help with some of those day-to-day -day activities that can be really frustrating. For the gadget-loving senior, smart devices for the home can be helpful. Beyond music or making a quick order, they can be great for setting timers for medications. They can be great for helping someone who struggles to dial on their phone if they have arthritis or um, have different um, difficulties with technology. Finally, Quadman says a ride service gift card for Uber or Lyft can empower adults. Transportation um, is a key to feeling like you're mobile in your community. For Health Minute, I'm Mandy Gaither. Thanks, Mandy. The doctor says home safety gadgets are also a good idea, especially for those who have mobility issues. She says fire blankets and small fire extinguishing canisters that are, that are more easily accessible can also make good functional presents as well. In Bay Area news, two sanctuary city billboards have popped up in El Paso, Texas. The signs read San Francisco welcomes immigrants or New York City welcomes immigrants. SanctuaryCities.com claims to have paid for them, though it's unclear why. 
The website suggests cities like New York, San Francisco, and Chicago have ample services to provide housing, food, and legal assistance. But the Opportunity Center for the Homeless says those places might not actually have enough resources because they're already overwhelmed with migrants. A San Jose neurologist has filed a lawsuit against the Coup Thai restaurant in Los Gatos over a spicy appetizer called Dragon Balls. In the lawsuit, Dr. Har Jaslin Walia claims that the dish caused permanent injuries to her throat and voice, including chemical burns to her vocal cords. Dragon Balls is a dish consisting of fried chicken with mint, shallots, green onions, cilantro, kaffir lime leaves, and chili. On its website, Kudatai describes itself as having a traditional menu that will cause, quote, fireworks to light up in your mouth. A new filing by the San Jose doctor claims that extra peppers were added to the appetizer. When she ordered the dish, Dr. Walia asked the server to have it made less spicy. However, after the dish came out and she began to eat, she immediately felt her mouth, tongue, throat, and nose begin to burn. The lawsuit states that the doctor, that Dr. Walia asked the waiter for something to help soothe the burning sensation, but was denied. When contacted by phone, a representative from the Coup de Thai restaurant had no comment. Now let's check in with Taryn Smith for a look at this week's entertainment news. Thanks, Evan. A new exciting addition for the city of Frisco, Texas, a kid-focused theme park. Currently under construction, the Universal Kids report does ha not have any opening day yet, but as Jobin Packner reports, some residents have concerns about what the park will bring to the city. You are watching the changing landscape of Frisco, literally. Land that sat idle for a long time will one day look like this. Good morning. And on Friday. Another exciting day in Frisco. We've learned what it will be called. Universal Kids Resort. We're designing it to unleash the creativity of young kids. Universal Kids Resort will be a family-friendly park catered to children under 10. The details are under wraps. But think immersive lands, interactive shows, theme rides, character meet and greets, and a 300-room hotel. It's definitely kid-sized. Universal Kids Resort is kid-sized. Uh, so it's about a quarter of one of our parks in Orlando. In 18 months, Universal Destinations and Experiences has gone from site selection to breaking ground. And Frisco, more importantly, North Texas, was strategic. In Orlando, and we have another one in Hollywood, and uh, this is right in the middle. And we have a tremendous site here, too. More than 100 acres right along the Dallas North Tollway right next to the Cobb Hill neighborhood. Many of those concerns that the residents brought up, council had those concerns before. Concerns like traffic, noise, and fit were addressed over the first three to four months by Universal. We are in an ideal location to manage the access to the park. You just come off the Dallas North Tollway and it'll go directly into our parking lot. And they're investing additional money into the project just to uh, make the neighbors more comfortable. Speaking of added money, Mayor Jeff Cheney was happy to hear Universal is way over budget on this project. Universal Kids Resort will start building up next year, and the first phase of this park will be ready in 2026. There will be new excitement, new concerns. It won't be for everybody. Then again, neither is the park. Thanks, Jobin. The company has said the resort will bring 25,000 jobs for the construction. The construction for a 32-acre park broke ground last month and is expected to open in 2026. And on a sad note, legendary television producer Norman Lear has died. His family says that he passed away Tuesday in his home in Los Angeles. He was 101. CNN's Stephanie Ullman takes a look back at Lear's career and his impact on the industry. Norman Lear is the man behind some of television's most memorable characters. George Jefferson, Wilona Woods, and Archie Bunker. His countless shows, like All in the Family, pushed the cultural boundaries of race, class, and politics in the 1970s. I'm up to here with Watergate. I'm drowning in Watergate. Oh, actually, the whole country's drowning in Watergate. If it encouraged people to talk, I think that's altogether good. A prolific Hollywood writer and producer, Lear was nominated for an Academy Award in 1967 for Divorce, American Style. There's something wrong with you. We're, we're choking to death. I'll call the fire department. 
He won four Emmy Awards before stepping back from show business in 1981 to form People for the American Way, a nonprofit organization that advocates for constitutional rights and progressive causes. We've come a long way through these years. We face a great deal of difficulty going forward, uh, but with your support, uh, I have every confidence that we'll be as effective in the next 30 as we were in the past. Lear's left-leaning politics made him the frequent target of conservative critics, but he maintained that being a liberal and a patriot weren't mutually exclusive. In 2000, the World War II veteran bought a rare copy of the Declaration of Independence and sent the document on a nationwide tour for Americans to view. When you vote, whether you think that one single vote will matter or not in the big count, it matters because you did something. Lear was passionate about his political work, but his Hollywood instincts never left him completely. Still pitching TV pilots in his 90s, Lear talked about his admiration for some of today's television creators in a 2012 interview with CNN. Oh, I think it's the golden age of drama. I think drama is, I can't get over how much good drama there is. I think there's a lot of good comedy too. I am crazy about South Park and the giant chances they take. I love Seth MacFarlane and uh, his work. I mean, there, there's some gutsy stuff going on there. After a 22-year absence, Lear returned to TV in 2017 with the revival of One Day at a Time, a remake of the revered comedy he produced in 1975. Thanks for an unnecessary yet super fun conversation with Alex, by the way. <laughs> From good times to all in the family, Norman Lear leaves a legacy of his own gutsy stuff. Those were the Thanks, Stephanie. As recently as 2020, when he was 98, Lear won an Emmy for executive producer of a live revival of two of his classic sitcoms that set another record in his astonishing career as he became the oldest Emmy nominee and winner in history. That's it for this week's look at entertainment news. I'm Taryn Smith. Now back to you, Evan. Thanks, Taryn. Minimum wage rates are increasing very soon. Wages are set to increase for workers across all types of businesses and industries in Hayward on January 1, 2024. Employers with more than 25 employees will be required to pay $16.90 per hour to their employees, while employers with 25 or less employees will only have to pay $16. California recently adopted additional $20 an hour minimum wage requirements for fast food workers, which will take effect April 1, 2024, and $25 an hour for healthcare workers, which will take effect June 1, 2024. For large employers, the minimum wage rate is adjusted based on the consumer price index for the San Francisco, Oakland, Hayward region, with a maximum increase not to exceed 5%. The minimum wage increase is definitely a step in the right direction, and hopefully there will be more increases in the future. If you've been anywhere around campus for the past year and a half, you've probably noticed some construction going on. Architects and engineers alike have been busy fashioning the new Chabot College Library and Learning Connections building, dead center in the middle of campus. Our reporter, India Richardson, had the opportunity to get a sneak peek at the new library before it's open publicly to see its key features and get an idea of what to expect. Let's take a look. Chabot gladiators are in for a surprise. We were able to get a sneak peek into the new library. The new library will have many new features and amenities. We teamed up with the architectural yeah, department and spoke to the, the students library. about what they looked forward and, to seeing in the new library. Uh, we interviewed last a few of them. We actually got to check out the library while it was still being constructed. Mm -hmm. And we got to see like their programs and their plans of how they're going to create the library. So now that we're going again a year later, so much progress has happened and we're excited to see it coming mm -hmm. up. A, like a staircase where students could go to hang out. I've seen those in like some big tech firms like Google and Apple where they'd have that like lounge area where students could come together and maybe work collaboratively. Other than that, I know that they're planning on having like study rooms, which is really nice. Being able to see that but in person, I think it's what I'm most looking forward to. We are looking into it to have a great tool for today to see more uh, finishes, close up the uh, ceilings and you know all those uh, uh, um, well, I would say fixtures that I might have already installed it. Sounds 
Then we made our way to the construction site. But before the tour, we sat down with the construction workers to discuss the project and ask questions. We even received an exclusive view of the floor plan of the library, including a 3D model. Finally, we were suited up in hard hats and vests, and we were ready to go. As we entered the library, the first thing that we saw were these massive steps that were said to be so heavy that they needed to be lifted and dropped into the building. The first floor will be where students will rent books. After, we headed to the second floor to see a beautiful open view of campus through ceiling to floor window panels. This is where all the computers will be for studying. Then, up on the third floor, we seen several rooms that will be for study groups, studying alone, or even sleeping. As we walked around, the construction workers were still working hard, even as we toured, because much of it is still being fixed up. We ended the tour on a high note after viewing what will be the gazebo of the library, which I think is the perfect touch and will be my favorite part of the library. After our tour finished, we all left excited for the new library's opening. I'm India Richardson, back to the studio. Thanks, India. The Library and Learning Connection Center is scheduled to open in, in the fall of 2024, but an exact date has yet to be announced. Chabot College's very own Margot Hall will soon be in a theater near you. The animated movie Soul will be re-released in theaters on January 12th of next year. The film stars our very own professor of theater arts here at Chabot College, Margot Hall. Margot is an award-winning actor, director, playwright, and educator. She's been a leading performer and director in the Bay Area for over 30 years. She currently works as an actress and artistic director of the Lorraine Hansberry Theater in San Francisco. Margot was cast in the 2020 Disney Pixar animated movie Soul after auditioning. She said she was honored to have the opportunity to voice a character in the Pixar film. Hall's film credits include Nash Bridges' Blind Spotting with David Diggs, the Netflix film All Day and Tonight, as well as reviving her role as the voice of Aunt Melba in Pixar's 2022 movie Soul. Tickets for the movie Soul will go on sale on January 2nd, 2024. On October 5th, 2023, Chabot College began a new tradition with an event honoring International Dress and Paraguas Day. We sent our reporter India Richardson out to cover the story. Chabot College celebrated its diversity on October 5th, 2023, with its first ever International Dress and Piraguas Day. What's that, you ask? Well, International Dress and Piraguas Day was an event where students dressed up in their traditional clothing from their cultures and enjoyed refreshing piraguas. So for El Centro, we wanted to do a whole event series mm -hmm. for Latinx and Hispanic Heritage Month. Yeah. And uh, <clears throat> like a lot of our ideas tended to be like around like Mexican culture. Yeah. And so we wanted to really like go past that mm -hmm. and include like other Latinx or Hispanic cultures um, in the event series. International Dress and Piraguas Day was assembled by El Central Student Center at Chabot and the event was inspired by Piraguas, which is a Puerto Rican version of shaved ice. There was music played from all over the world that people danced to. Eight to 10 students even danced the Cabala Dorado, which is a traditional Spanish square dance. Finally, there was a traditional costume contest. We all celebrated finding the unity there is in diversity. Reporting for KCTH Channel 27. Thanks, India. This first annual event expressed an appreciation of Hispanic culture. Many attendants learned the importance of celebrating heritage in a way they had not experienced before. Some people may not realize it, but Chabot College has its own planetarium. Actually, it's one of the oldest buildings here on campus. We sent our reporter Don Wright out to learn more. While Chabot College may occupy only a small amount of acreage in the tiny city of Haywood, California, it has the distinction of being one of the few colleges in California to have its own planetarium right on campus. The 30-foot planetarium, located in Building 1900, is one of the original facilities included in the construction of the campus. Chabot is lucky in that of all the community colleges in California, and there are 116 of them, not all of them have planetariums. So the planetarium we're in now is really special. It's equipped with a new digital projector. Across the dome, I can then project images to take and make students feel like they're outside. I can put visuals up and movies up. So it's a learning theater that is so much fun. Professor Hildreth began working at Chabot College in 1989. Back then, the facility was equipped with a Spritz 
A3P optomechanical planetarium projector, which projected light through a series of pinhole openings. We had an old optomechanical projector. It had a bright light in the center and a ball with about 1,500 holes drilled in it. And the light shining through the holes would project onto the ceiling individual little dots. And I could rotate the ball to make you think that the sky was turning. Um, and I loved it. It was really neat. It's the way old planetariums worked. Um, it was a beautiful piece of equipment and machinery. It was much like a British sports car. It would work sometimes. Um, and you would usually tear it apart every year to go fix stuff. With seating for up to 50 students, the planetarium, which is used for astronomy lecture and lab classes, is a powerful audiovisual space. The astronomy program at Chabot, we teach all of our lecture classes in the planetarium. Um, we offer a t couple different kinds of classes, one focusing on the solar system and one on stars and galaxies and black holes and cosmology, a little more detail. The astronomy classes attract a wide variety of students. Well, I've been taking courses ever since I retired. In fact, I took courses when I was actually here. Uh, I've got a second master's at Cal State while I was president here. And then I also took courses on campus, and ever since then I've been taking courses on campus. So, taking an astronomy class in Chabot College, uh, I didn't expect that it's going to be so much fun, but Professor Scott Hildreth definitely make uh, this class uh, fun, entertaining, and interesting. I've got so much information I've never known before, and he makes students become more curious about astronomy and uh, our world. When I look back over 30 odd years of teaching here, uh, there are a few things that really strike me as being the most fun. One of which is taking a class that many students think of as only an elective. It gets them to a transfer, it gets them to a degree, and having them leave the class thinking differently about their place in space. Literally, our place in space. Having them think differently about what it is to be human and to ask questions. What it is about science that allows us to advance as a civilization. Is it worth spending money on science? What does it give us, even if you're not a scientist? And I think that's so important in a college education. College, to me, should not be about putting mirrors up in a room that people see themselves. It should be windows that they then see the rest of the world. And they can decide whether they want to be like that. But we want to give them a chance to see the world. This room and this facility in astronomy gives them a chance to see themselves in the universe. What a neat opportunity. This is Don Wright reporting for Chabot TV. Thanks, Don. Chabot's planetarium is used year-round for classes and special events. More than 500 students enjoy the facility each year, along with numerous visitors. Now it's time for sports news with our sportscaster, Alan Sampson. Thanks, Evan. On November 4th, 2023, the Chabot Gladiators squared off against the Fresno State Bulldogs. The Gladiators had the home court advantage. India Richardson has the story. The Chabot Gladiators were ready for battle. I was able to watch the basketball tournament held at Chabot on Saturday, November 4th, 2023. Chabot Gladiators began their game with the Pledge of Allegiance before they violently went up against Fresno. The basketball players gave high energy during each game. All of their hard work and strenuous training, which began in the summertime, showed on the court. The Gladiators worked so synergistically with one another that it seemed like they knew what the other was thinking before they even did it. The team's dynamic performance electrified the crowd as they erupted into cheer after every successful basket was made. I had the pleasure of speaking with Coach Keenan before the game, and I learned that he is as dedicated to basketball as he is passionate. With Coach Keenan's guidance, the Gladiators were bound to win. His unique philosophy is to teach his players to be mindful of each other, but to also compete with one another, so that they challenge themselves to not only become a stronger unit, but also to improve as individual players. So... My coaching philosophy is to the betterment of all the student athletes. So it starts with academics, it starts with mentorship, it starts with uh, accountability. Um, another part of my philosophy is just being consistent and, and willingness to work hard. Yeah, so those are, those are my fundamentals of my coaching philosophy. The Gladiators even won the winning basket by two points with a slam dunk, which was a perfect way to end such an intense game. The Gladiators were victorious once again, and the crowd went crazy, thundering in cheers. 
I'm India. Now back to the studio. Thanks, India. Here's wishing continued success for our home team, the Gladiators. Time Magazine has announced its Athlete of the Year, Lionel Messi. It's just one more accolade for the soccer superstar. Messi led his national team, Argentina, to victory in the last World Cup. And he also won the coveted Ballon d'Or Award for World's Player of the Year, his eighth time receiving the honor. Some people would argue Messi is the best to ever play the world's most popular sport. He made a big move this summer when he left soccer club Paris Saint-Germain to join the MLS. On the day of Messi's debut with his new team Inter Miami, Apple added 110,000 U.S. subscriptions to its MLS season pass service. According to analytics company Antenna, it was the largest ever single day spike. Time Magazine attributes the new wave of interest in soccer in the U.S. to Messi. Some even call it the Messi effect. Although Messi is regarded by many as the best soccer player in the world, he still competes against Cristiano Ronaldo for the undisputed title of the best. A rare baseball card drew big money at an auction in Baltimore on Monday, December 4th. The Babe Ruth rookie card was saw, sold for a whopping $7.2 million, making it one of the highest selling baseball cards in history. Alex Glaze has more. Just after midnight Monday, a 1914 Babe Ruth rookie card was sold for $7.2 million. To think something, you know, a piece of cardboard uh, this big is now in the, moving into the, uh, the genre that you would expect fine art. Uh, to be in 7.2 million crazy. The car shows a 19 year old Ruth in a Baltimore Orioles uniform with the team's schedule on the back of the card. A blue version of the rookie card is on display at the Bay of Ruth Birthplace Museum in downtown Baltimore. The local newspaper printed both colors. People, you know, started collecting them. The blue ones are more rare than the red ones, but we're only talking 10 cards known to exist anyway. Sean Hearn says Babe Ruth is an American icon and investing in Ruth collectibles is a wise investment. You think of Marilyn Monroe, you think of Lucille Ball, you think of John Wayne. Um, they have become almost legendary in their status and Ruth has done that. He, he went from being an, a legend now to being almost mythical, larger than life. $7.2 million is the third highest amount ever paid for a sports card. A 1952 Topps Mickey Mantle card sold for $12.6 million and a Honus Wagner card sold for $7.25 million. In downtown Baltimore, Alex Glaze, WJZ. Thanks, Alex. The sale was a testament to Babe Ruth's legacy as one of baseball's greatest players. That's going to do it for this week's sports. I'm Alan Sampson. Now back to you, Evan. Thanks, Alan. Monday, December 4th was National Cookie Day, a day many people are quite willing to celebrate. Now, with the holiday season in full swing, cookies should be easy to find, whether to buy or make yourself. The name derives from the Dutch word koki, meaning little cake. The cookie's history can be traced to the 7th century in Persia, not long after the use of sugar became common. From there, they spread to Europe, where cookies could be found all over the region by the 14th century. Cookies made their American arrival in the 17th century. The most popular at the time were macaroons and gingerbread. Celebrate by posting pictures of your favorites using the hashtag National Cookie Day. We sent our reporter India Richardson out onto campus to see just how much sweets people think is appropriate to eat. I think that we should um, obviously <laughs> consume um, enough to like celebrate the holidays, but not too much where it gets to an unhealthy point that um, damages our physical health. I think we should because um, you want to like take care of your health, and I feel like that's a good way to take care of your health and just like maintain a fit body. I guess. Uh, I mean. At the same time, we only eat them during the holidays, so I mean, I guess there's really no long-term effects of like gaining weight if you don't eat them like year-round. I mean, really, Christmas is like one day, two days, if you count Christmas Eve. Um, I say it's the holiday and just go for it. As long as you're not eating like that all year-round, you should be okay. Thanks, India. Chabot students sure do like their sweets. And for our final story today, a hero's welcome in Tulsa, Oklahoma, on Sunday, December 3rd. 
275 members of the Oklahoma Air National Guard returned home after a four-month deployment to the Middle East. Family and friends were on hand to welcome back their loved ones. The Guard members were overseas to provide support for other U.S. troops in the area. The deployment was supposed to only be three months, but was extended another 30 days. Service members, including Lieutenant Colonel Christy Hindi, say they are excited to be home and reunited with their families, especially with the holidays coming up. That's all for Chabot News this week. Thanks to all the students and staff in the Mass Communications Department here at Chabot College for making this production possible. You can watch us anytime online at youtube.com slash Chabot TV. Stay tuned to KCTH Channel 27 on Comcast for more Chabot TV.